All right, let's get right to it. Here are three signs that you're dating the wrong person. As a therapist slash relationship dating coach, um, one of the questions I get often is, uh, John, am I dating the right person? Am I dating the right person? And listen, I don't know. Uh, I can I can ask you questions and maybe you can come to your own you know conclusion. Um, and so this is going to help you. And of course, there can be many signs. I just picked three. And I purposely picked these three because um, I think these three can be misconstrued, right? I think people can uh, think that these are, th are reasons why um, you're dating the right person. So I, I do want to uh, flip the script a little bit. All right, so number one, uh, a sign that you may be dating the wrong person is that the attraction is explosive. Now listen, I used to believe, I'm looking around for a book because I want to hold it up. In this book, It's Not Me, It's You, written by me and my partner, Vanessa Bennett. We are both therapists. Um, one of the things that we talk about is how the lightning in the bottle can actually be dysfunction. I used to believe, because I, like you, grew up watching um, um, rom-coms and Disney movies, and I used to be a hopeless romantic. Um, I used to think that if the attraction is really strong, you know, the whole meeting your eyes uh, across, locking eyes across the room, the um, hairs on the back of your neck going up, your knee-high socks being knocked off, <laughs> um, that that means the relationship's going to have legs, right? So I used to tie healthy, sustainable relationship to how strong the chemistry is. And if the chemistry was really explosive, that was a good thing. You're getting a head start. That means the relationship's going to last forever. And of course, that is not true. I have now learned, uh, especially by working with clients, that if the chemistry is very explosive, if you can't be away from this person, if it's, you know, um, if it's so sticky and explosive, and of course that feels good, but um, you start to lose a sense of self, that this can actually be dysfunction, you know? Um, this can be not a good thing. A lot of times healthy relationships feel kind of flat. Now, of course, there has to be attraction. We have to be attracted to the person, right? At least uh, to a certain extent. Um, but I think sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when that collision is that powerful, you, <laughs> you forget who you are or where you, where you are. And, every, and, and, and that person's um, you know, texting you or engaging with you can uh, literally ruin your day or make your day. Uh, that kind of, you know, dependency because the attraction is so strong, like it's a drug, that can be unhealthy. That may mean that you're dating the wrong person. I know, I know it, it's, uh, it sucks because you're like, what? And I want that. Of course, we all do. But too much sugar is not a good thing. Okay. Um, the second one is that there's no fighting. We, uh, I get a lot of people who say, Yeah, my relationship's great because we never fight. And for me, that's a red flag. Uh, you're supposed to fight. It's not about how many times you fight. It's about how you fight, right? So um, the second sign has two pieces. One, if you're just never fighting. Because if you're never fighting, um, it means that either people are uh, not wanting to lean into conflict, resolve conflict. It means that maybe um, things are swept under the rug. But as humans, we we all have conflict. We all quote unquote fight. And it's the fighting that makes us grow as long as the fighting is done in a healthy way. And that goes to, um, that leads me to the second part of this, which is um, if the fighting is unhealthy, then that's the, that may be a big sign you're with the wrong person. Two people need to fight in a healthy way for the fighting to promote growth and um, 
create a space where people can look inward, you know, and have um, a lot of individual growth, which then they bring that to the table. And when two people are doing that, it creates a growth that is bigger than them. So like the relationship grows, right? The combination of two people sharing a space and learning to fight in a healthy way, not only sharpens the parts, but it also sharpens this thing that they're building, which is their relationship. And here, I know it's a little abstract, but if that is built strong, then when people fall or when you're in a hard place, what you have built can carry you. Does that make sense? So we have two people coming together and if they are fighting in a healthy way, because every relationship has conflict, that's gonna produce a healthier relationship container. It's gonna produce more trust it's gonna sharpen the parts, which is you and your partner. And if that is done over time, now you are building something that is gonna carry, that is gonna carry one or both of you when things are tough, when people drift, when you have your, you know, going through your winter, right? And, and I think this is what's beautiful about any relationship, not just uh, intimate relationships, uh, but also friendships, you know? I mean, think about it, uh, with friendships, how many times when you were in a dark place, your best friend or your group of friends uh, carried you, you know? And whether that means that that relationship was so strong that um, you felt less alone or that you had a safe space to express yourself or, you know, whatever that means, or just them taking you out and, and, and refusing to, to let you sit on the couch and, um, you know, eat your feelings all day. Um, these relationships, these bonds that we have with human beings, if they are safe and healthy, they are so valuable in that they can carry us through the hard, hardship, right? And intimate relationships, of course, are the same. So going back to this idea of fighting without fighting, this idea of um, if two people learn how to fight in a healthy way, then uh, your relationship can have legs. If two people can't, and both people have to, or at least try to, uh, but if two people can't, then that's a, that's a sign that maybe you're with the wrong person. If there's no fighting, that's a sign people may be running, avoiding, and maybe a sign that you're with the wrong person. Okay, and the final one is the space created can't hold the individual's growth. I know it sounds weird. This is a sign that you may be with the wrong person. If the space created between you and your partner doesn't allow for individual growth, right? So um, because the space is grabbing or toxic or unhealthy, um, because the space is not safe, or maybe you don't feel safe in that space, um, and it could be for you know a, a bunch of reasons, not just uh, not just abuse. Uh, abuse is obvious. If there's physical, emotional abuse, that space is not safe, and that's not going to promote anyone's growth, even the person who's being abusive. Um, but what if you're just you know in a space where um, you have different values with someone, or you guys want very different things, or maybe you wanted the same thing in the beginning, but now you want something different? Um, if that space doesn't allow or promote individual growth, then that may be a sign that you're with the wrong person. And maybe in the beginning it did because people change and circumstances change, you know? And so maybe over time, after, I don't know, six years of marriage, you wake up and you realize that the marriage, that the space is not promoting your growth or your partner um, has drifted or has changed and is not promoting your growth individually, uh, then that's a huge sign, you know? And it, it may not be a sign to like end something, but it's definitely a sign to start a conversation. It's definitely a sign to um, create some kind of dialogue to do something proactive, right? So 
I use the word space because I try to stay away from just, you know, someone doing something wrong. And I try to frame it where two people are bringing something to the table. And um, we all have to take ownership in, in all of our relationships, right? So the contribution of two people, their stories, their wiring, who they are, how they are, everything is going to create this space. And um, this space either is going to be healthy or not healthy. This space is going to uh, be greater than its parts, you and your partner, and hopefully encourage you and your partner to grow both individually and as a couple. And if this space is not doing that, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And the responsibility of each party is to do something about it. And that is not pointing fingers. That is looking inward and asking yourself, what am I contributing to this space to create to uh, create these cracks in this, this relationship container? Thank you for listening as always. I hope you... Uh, Pick up our book, It's Not Me, It's You. And uh, it's all about breaking the blame cycle and learning how to relationship better.